Okay guys, we're now going to cover the air brake as part of the restoration for Harrier XV741 turning it back from GR3 to GR1 spec. We noticed that there was some quite significant differences between the air brakes on the early variant aircraft and the later GR3 spec. To start with, on this side we've got the Harrier GR3 air brake which we removed from XV741 as part of the restoration. You can see that we had it soda blasted back to bare metal and you can also see that the trailing edge of the air brake has got quite a bit of damage where it contacted the ground at some point in the past. The air brake, um, the air brakes tend to droop if hydraulics haven't been applied to the aircraft for quite a while and uh, if towing an aircraft around with the air brake in a fully deployed position it's quite easy to contact the floor which is probably what's happened here at some point in the past. On my other side we have an original early specification Harrier GR1 air brake and uh, this is the air brake which we're going to fit back onto the Air Race Harrier. Uh, good old friend Bill Fern at Doncaster Air Adventure actually had one of these in his shed and um, when we realised there was quite a difference between the two air brakes um, on GR3 to GR1 it was quite a headache as to where we we're going to find one from. Um, I'll hold up this air brake so you can see the visual differences between the two. First of all, you'll notice that there's quite a significant size difference. Uh, there was a mod carried out when we got our heads in the books to find out what was going on and modification 1703 was a mod which reduced the physical length of the air brake by about six inches. And as you can see from uh, the trailing edge, by the looks of it, they just took a hacksaw to the back end of the air brake. You can still see the tool marks here along the edge and they cut off six inches to make the air brake smaller. No one's actually been able to um, explain why that was done. Um, it's reduced the surface area of the air brake and the trailing edge has been filled with body filler. So it's fairly agri agricultural, but um, that was mod 1703. We also found out that the flange intersections, which are these parts here, on the GR1 air brake, they're very smooth and rounded and they've got quite a nice flowing pattern to them. On the GR3 these have been made much sharper and they've been reduced in size and um, reinforced with a strip down the side. We found out that that was modification 493 which was carried out to give the air brake increased structural integrity and make it much stronger. So there must have been cases in the, the early years of operating Harriers where they're more simpler, larger um, air brake cracked or uh, got structural problems. Um, so that's why the air brake was modified and changed. Quite a lot of work gone into prepping that up and getting it ready. It's probably around 25, 30 man hours in that air brake. That's ready to go away and get painted. And just to finish off, I'm gonna show you guys where the air brake actually sits on the aircraft so you can understand what it does and how it operates. This is the air brake as fitted to our other Harrier XZ130. As you can see, it's on the underside of the rear fuselage, just behind the main undercarriage legs. The air brake is a door that's hinged at the uh, front leading edge, and there's a large hydraulic ram or actuator inside, which extends and retracts to open the air brake in its fully deployed position, or if it was flying along in normal flight, the air, air brake would be closed and uh, the underside of the aircraft will be fully streamlined. The pilot operates the air brake using a small button or switch on the top of the throttle top. Uh, when the pilot selects the air brake, it hydraulically opens, pops down into the airflow, creates drag, and that aerodynamically breaks the aircraft to slow it down.